Hi Dr. McNews class, it's your ULA Chloe and I'm going to be doing your study session video over chapter 15, Symptoms of Psychological Disorders. I put my email down below so if you need to email me with any questions or concerns go ahead and let me know and I'd be happy to help you out. I also want to refer you guys to the study sheet over the psychological disorders. It should be on your Blackboard site. So if you want to pull that up and follow along, that'd be awesome. But if not, it's a great study tool, so I would recommend checking it out. The first two disorders that I want to talk to you guys about today is post-traumatic stress disorder and acute stress disorder. So both of these disorders have very similar characteristics, such as they both fall under the category of anxiety disorders. Um, they're characterized by anxiety and re-experiencing symptoms that follow the trauma. But the main difference that I want to point out is when this occurs. So for acute stress disorder, or ASD, the symptoms are going to follow the trauma and last to about a month. Comparative to PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, the symptoms are going to follow the trauma and last longer than a month. So that's important to differentiate between the two, is how long are the symptoms occurring. So it won't be considered PTSD until the symptoms are lasting longer than one month. The next disorder that I want to talk about is obsessive compulsive disorder. This falls in the anxiety disorder category, and the main thing that I want to talk about are the difference between obsessions and compulsions. So obsessions are going to be repeated, uncontrollable thoughts, images, and urges, and the compulsion is going to be the action following that, which is usually repetitive and ritualistic, which is done to try and reduce and control the anxiety. So an example that is common that most of us probably know is the obsession of germs on one's hands and just those thoughts that you can't get them off and the compulsion or the ritualistic behavior to reduce that anxiety of the thoughts of germs on your hands is going to be washing the hands over and over to the point where you feel like you are getting the germs off and can control those thoughts. The next disorder that I want to talk to you guys about is schizophrenia. This is considered a psychotic disorder and it consists of positive and negative symptoms. So one of the biggest factors of recognizing positive and negative symptoms is remembering that it doesn't mean that it's good or bad. So it's really important to remember that. Instead, I like to think of it in mathematical terms. So think about a positive symptom is something being added and a negative symptom is something that's reduced or taken away. So an example of a positive symptom for someone who has schizophrenia would be laughing when they shouldn't. And an example of a negative symptom would be a flat affect or a lack of facial expression. The next thing is hallucinations. This is another characteristic of schizophrenia. And hallucinations are going to be related to the senses. So hearing or seeing what is not actually there. So this could be seeing a person or hearing voices when, when they aren't actually happening. A second part is delusions, which is another characteristic of schizophrenia. This is going to be beliefs or ideas about yourself or the environment that aren't so two true. mood disorders that I want to tell you guys about is major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder. So MDD, major depressive disorder, is going to be characterized of a depressed mood, a loss of interest in activities, and we also need to see four additional symptoms for at least two weeks. Bi bipolar disorder is going to consist of really low lows and super high highs with the lows being characterized by depression and the highs being characterized by mania. Um, so this is going to be when someone is experiencing these different moods for an extended amount of time, but alternating back and forth between feeling depressed and feeling very manic. So to wrap up this part of the video, like you all have been doing in your other study session videos, we're going to go over a couple questions just to make sure you are understanding and to give you an idea of what you might be asked on your exam. All right, our first question says, George Frederick Handel composed his Messiah during three weeks of intense creative energy. Many believe Handel suffered a mild form of A, agoraphobia, B, dissociate disorder, C, bipolar disorder, or D, schizophrenia. I would recommend pausing the video now if so you can take some time to think about the question and pick your answer. All right, so when we look at A, agoraphobia, if we break this down into two parts, we see that the last part says phobia, and within the question, it doesn't seem like he has a fear of anything, so I think we can cross the first one off. Um, the second choice, dissociate disorder. Um, George doesn't seem to be dissociating from his identity or his personality in any 
sort of way, so I think we can cross B off. And let's look at D, schizophrenia. He doesn't seem to be producing any positive or negative symptoms of schizophrenia that we talked about. So let's look at C, bipolar disorder. We know that bipolar disorder is characterized of high highs or super intense energy or low lows of depression. And so if we look at C, bipolar disorder, we know that this is correct. George is going through three weeks of intense creative energy, which is clearly um, telling us that he's in the manic state of bipolar disorder right now. Question number two says, one of the negative symptoms of schizophrenia is A, an expressionless face, B, loud and meaningless talking, C, inappropriate laughter, or D, hallucinations. So go ahead and pause the video and make your answer choice. So we know a negative symptom is going to be something that is removed. So instead, let's first try to pick out the positive symptoms and cross those off. So if we first look at B, we know that loud and meaningless talking would be a positive symptom um, added to someone who's experiencing schizophrenia. If we look at C, inappropriate laughter, this is another positive symptom that would be added to someone who's experiencing schizophrenia. And also D, hallucinations, this would also be a positive symptom. So after we cross those three off, we can look at A, which is an expressionless face, which goes back to our example that we talked about a few minutes ago of a negative symptom of an expressionless face or the lack of emotion that one may show when they have experienced um, schizophrenia. Question number three says, Cecil is preoccupied with thoughts of jumping out the window of his 10th floor apartment. In order to reduce his anxiety, he frequently counts his heartbeats aloud. Cecil would most likely be diagnosed as experiencing a a, panic disorder, b, bipolar disorder, c, generalized anxiety disorder, or D, obsessive compulsive disorder. So go ahead and pause the question, take a few minutes, and choose your answer. In this question, it's important to look at the exact behaviors that Cecil is showing. So the first keyword that we can point out is thoughts. He has thoughts of jumping out of the window, and these thoughts are causing high anxiety for him. Um, so in order to reduce his anxiety, he is behaving in a certain way, which is counting his heartbeats aloud. Based on our previous slides, we know that someone who is repeating behaviors in order to reduce anxiety um, is probably someone who has OCD. So I think it's pretty easy to eliminate the answer choices in this question and choose D. In our last question, number four states, Though it has been two weeks since his car accident, Max continues to have trouble sleeping and has vivid flashbacks of the crash. Max is likely suffering from A, panic disorder, B, post-traumatic stress disorder, C, generalized anxiety disorder, or D, acute stress disorder. Go ahead and pause, choose your answer, and then resume. All right, so when we look at the answers of this question, um, if we start with A, panic disorder, we know that a panic disorder is going to be reoccurring panic attacks followed by worry about future panic attacks. Um, so it doesn't seem like Max is really having panic attacks, it just states that he's having trouble sleeping and having vivid flashbacks of his car accident. When we look at the question, it states that it's only been two weeks since Max's car accident. So when we look at B, post-traumatic stress disorder, we know that the characteristics and the symptoms have to be occurring longer than a month. Choice C, generalized anxiety disorder, um, Max isn't really displaying uncontrollable worry, so this leaves us with choice D, acute stress disorder. Um, we can see Max's symptoms are his trouble sleeping, vivid flashbacks, and it's happening within two weeks of his car accident, which is a small time period, acute time period. Um, so we can choose acute stress disorder as our answer. All right, thanks for watching, guys. That is all I have for now. Um, like I said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll respond. Until then, stay safe, wash your hands, and keep studying.